first time we got up to sing was at Moran Baptist Church. And um, I had told them the night before that they was going to help me sing. That, uh, so they were expecting it. It was not a, not a shock to them. And she said, I'm going to sing at church tomorrow, and you and Peg are going to help me. And this is what we're going to do. Peg, here's your part, and Carol, here's your part. And we sang. We always did what Dora told us. She was kind of like a mother figure to us. That's the first time the three of us got up to sing. I've been singing by myself, started out singing with my dad. And uh, then when he got sick, I started singing by myself in church. So then I'd say I'd get me some help. Decided I needed help. But I think I was seven or eight. And then we sung that, well, well, that she set me up on the table so I could be even with Peg and her and Peg. And so we sung. And I sung the, uh, the tenor part, and Peg sung the alto part, and Dora did the lead work. And that's how, that's how we started in that little church, Moran. So I got Peg and Carol. We got up to sing, and that started the whole business. There was people there at uh, Moran that day. Uh, it was homecoming day, and uh, there's people there that uh, invited us to their church, and that started the whole business. I said, who's going to write that down, you know? <laughs> Somebody write that down. We're going here. We're going there. Reuben's family sang as the Bean family and Reuben played the guitar for them, and they sung. And uh, so sometimes they would sing, and then sometimes we would sing. We didn't have any music. We sung a cappella. And uh, then later on, uh, Dad bought Peg a guitar, and she just learned to play the guitar. And uh, she started playing some for us. And, uh, and then Reuben would kind of, every once in a while, he'd just strum along with us at the church on his guitar, and Dora asked Peg, she said, I bet you can't get him to play guitar for us. Well, his family quit singing, and I said, well, Reuben, why don't you just go with us? He said, okay. So he just went with us. And I'm not sure, but I think Peg asked him to, to play guitar for us. And he did, and then he started going some with us, and he and Peg started dating, and that's how it all started. We'd be washing dishes, and we'd practice a song. But, and so I told Reuben, I said, uh, you'll have to come up to the kitchen, and we'll practice there. But I said, uh, I want you to sing a bass. And he went, bass? But anyway, he come on up and we practice a song and I said, now I didn't hear any bass. I want to hear some bass. So he just lit out and sung bass just like he'd always been singing it. We were singing in this uh, big church and uh, it, was, it was packed out. I mean, they were sitting all around the walls. They were standing around the walls. They were just everywhere. We were doing two or three services. It was, uh, you know, an all-night sing everywhere we went. And we were supposed to be at this church, the second uh, engagement we had that night. And when we got there, we just had to stand in the back until they called on us to sing. So I sit back there and I said to them, I'm going to sit up front. <laughs> so I went up front. And Dora just parted the way. She just went down all the way down front and sat down on the mourner's bench. And, of course, we didn't follow her there because we didn't know exactly what was going on. Got up there on that bench, and it went <laughs> off it went. That thing just broke in two, and Dora sat on the floor. And we laughed and laughed and laughed because we just kids. And I thought to myself, the first thought that struck me, I thought, why did the Lord let her fall right there in front of everybody? And then now we've got to get up and sing. And here I was, you know, I looked around and here all these men come to help me up. And oh, I, I thought, let's go home right now. Let's go home. Dora had said she was, she was moving. She moved to Big Stone Gap, Virginia. 
uh, with a UMWA and um, got a good job up there. So she moved. And then I, I sung a New Year's Eve service with Peg and Reuben. We sung as a trio after Dora left. And uh, just not long, but we, we did, some, did some dates, just the trio, just me and Peg and Reuben. And then um, I just felt like after two, uh, two kids, I needed to stay home. And so uh, it was a good time for Connie and Cheryl. They had been singing some. We, we were kept, you know, we tried to sing a little bit. You know, they kept saying, well, we'll sing, because we, we had talked, they'd ask us, and we'd talked about, well, yeah, we'd like to sing. And uh, I had worked on learning the alto part back then. Uh, Connie was doing the uh, tenor or soprano part. Cheryl and I started singing with Mom and Dad in March of 72. And um, we just carried on with parts. One sung the high, one sung the low, and we could sing whatever part we needed to, so sometimes we'd switch out. And, but we loved singing. We never, it, it never seemed like a, a, a job or anything, or anything that Mom and Dad asked us if we would. We just felt like that's what we wanted to do. They had even made a, put a song on, on one of our albums they had sang uh, just the two of them. If God is dead, who's this living in my soul? Connie and I sang that as a duet. That was the very first one. And so that's what we did. We fell in. We'd been traveling with them for a while. So, you know, we'd get up and sing a couple of songs before they sung. So we had sung together since we were little. It was a good time to usher them in. And they went, uh, started singing with Peg and Reuben and they were the new McCamey family. Cheryl uh, had married a preacher, and um, she was expecting her first child, and um, he took his, his church uh, pastoring, and so she felt like she needed to get off the road and, and you know, raise her family. And I came uh, to fill in for her. You know, without your family traveling, it's just better for you to be home, so that's what worked for me. and. Um, so it was good. I think it was a good time for me to step out, a good time for Carol to step in. Her, She had older kids, you know, so um, it's a good time for her to step in. That's when she left the group and I came back and I told Peg and Reuben that I would um, fill in until they could find somebody. And I filled in for 26 years. Carol sang 26 years and then she wanted to... Uh, take off, you know, be with her husband because he'd retired. And so um, she, she gave us some notice that she was going to leave. And so um, Mama called Cheryl and said, can you, you know, pray, help us pray. We don't really know what we're going, what to do. I had left work and I was in the grocery store when Mom called me on the cell phone. And uh, she just told me, said, I want you to be praying for us because Dad and I, we don't know if we need to retire or what, but, but Carol has turned in her notice and she's going to be leaving. And I said, well, I will. I'll, I'll certainly be praying about that. And so when I got home, um, Alan and I were talking about it, and uh, we were talking about our schedules, the way they were now, you know, and he said, uh, well, honey, you know, you could, you could go back. And what a testimony but that you could share because of the fact that Mel Clinic had told me a few years earlier that I'd never be able to sing because of my disease and my pulmonary arteries. And um, he said, what a testimony, you know, and to be able to, that being restored and uh, almost like he's redeemed that back. And uh, so it was, it was a good time for me to be able to go back and, um, you know, I mean, I had no idea that, you know, I would be the lead vocal on the, the, the next single after that. But it was, uh, it was a, a sign, I think, for, for Alan and me both and hopefully to a lot of other people that, um, that God had restored that. It doesn't mean he does that for everybody, but he had chosen that time for me. So, you know, it worked out that she could come back and sing, and so it's just like it just fell right back into place again, just like it was. So, God, that was God's plan. When we went in the studio to record, we never had uh, prepared much for it. We just went and got our pictures made and then went over the... Next time I had an appointment with him, and that day we went in the studio to record. We didn't 
scope it out or nothing, <laughs> you know, before we went in. And we just went in and recorded. We were doing a, a benefit singing for a quartet there in Kingsport. And when we come off stage, Tilford Salyer with Tri-State Recording met us and asked if we would consider a recording. And at that time, it was just Dory Pegg and Carol, and I was playing guitar. And Dory told him, said, we'll consider it if Ruben will do the bass part on the singing. And that's when we went with Tri-State, and we did our first album, The Family Prayer. And that's how it came about. And that's how I came in to be singing with the group. And I had a lot of friends in the area that were talking to me about the McCameys. I said, I've never heard of the McCameys. He said, well, you need to. We're going to go hear them sing this weekend. And it was about 100 miles from where I lived to where they were singing. So I thought, well, man, if anybody wants to go hear a group that bad, they must be pretty special. And one night my phone rang and Eddie Crook called. I'd never had met Eddie or talked to Eddie. And he, he told me that somebody in Kingsport had told him that he needed to contact us about recording. So we signed the McCamies to a three-year recording contract. He called me again and wanted to try to do another one. But after 10 years, we had 10 recordings and several number one songs, including the mega hit, God on the Mountain. We were going to do this video, and the last video we'd done was not very, a very good experience, so we was trying to do everything right, and we were short of songs, and I suggested to Reuben the song, God on the Mountain, that I'd been listening to, and he said, oh no, Peg, we can't do that because we don't know it well enough. Well, we kept going on, and the time got close, and we still didn't have the songs we needed, so Reuben agreed that we could do God on the Mountain. It was a good working relationship with Eddie there for quite a few years. Eldridge Fox and uh, all the people that was involved in uh, Horizon at the time uh, approached us about signing with them. We, uh, Eddie had went as far as he felt like he could go. And they came over and uh, we got together and they were forming a new record label and all that. And so it was us in the Kingsman County that was the head up on that. It turned out good. We've had a good relationship with them. Matter of fact, we're still with them. I had been playing backstage with the group, or not with them, but been playing. And just to kind of, that was good exercise for me, trying to learn. And uh, so that night, Dad came over with the big, with his guitar and he put the strap on me and of course it hung down to like my knees and uh, he adjusted the strap and pulled it up and then everything like that and he asked me if that was cool and I said yeah it's cool and then he asked me said do you want to play tonight and I said uh, sure and uh, ever since then I was 11 when that happened and the guitar was huge I still got the guitar there it is the old talking mate it's dusty I had to dig this out the other day just to find it and I actually found a picture of me with it. See that? Can you get a shot of that right there? See that? <laughs> I was every bit of like 50 pounds right there, maybe soaking wet. And I stayed the same height from like 11 to 21. And so this here looked huge on me and I had to play it up here. And, but yeah, you can tell it's got all kinds of scars and beats and bumps on it. This is actually dad's guitar, but where it was. I joined the McCamies in 1987, and in 1992, Connie and I were married. And that same year, uh, the McCamies went on the Horizon label, uh, which they are still on. And since 92, I've been fortunate to co-produce and play on everything since. Anytime you see the McCamies pull into the parking lot here at Horizon Records, it's kind of one of those things of it's like family coming to visit. Uh, Peg comes in the door and, and she gives you a big hug. So it's, it's, it's always been a family atmosphere and we've always appreciated that. I can't believe the time has gone by just like that, but uh, we certainly enjoyed uh, some times in the studio, some very spirit-filled times, uh, creating great music with the McCamies. You've endowed the gospel music world with some very fine songs, so many great songs that blessed us with so many precious memories. 
when they talked about going full time on the road, I said, now, when you make a commitment to that, you gotta stick with it. So there'll be times when you won't have enough appointments to go full time. You'll have a day off here and there. And that's all right. Go ahead and take your time off. And um, little did I know I was wrong about that. They had time, they had the appointments out the ceiling, you know, just they could cause they really, they really did good.